Hey hey everybody and welcome back to Noisy Works. Today we are going to talk about this. This is a Bontag Biometal Nozzle with a hardened steel insert and at the back we have the CHT part. This is a fully copper nozzle that is coated in some nickel. The main reason of this nozzle is going to be fairly obvious. It has a hardened steel tip in it so we can print stuff like this. This is PETG with carbon fiber which makes it able to print stuff like this. This is for my new doorbell. This is a mount I designed just because I wanted to have a 45 degree angle on it. And this is the base that is going to house the hammer of Thor. Well, it's going to be my free inspiration of it, at least. Now with the regular Creality K1, we cannot print carbon filled filaments because we don't have the proper nozzle for it. I did some testing with this nozzle on the Creality K1. This is a 0.4 millimeter nozzle and we have uh, tested ABS, PLA, Hyper PLA and we have done some PETG. Now the results are quite interesting. You would think that copper, really good conductor, then you have the CHT design, even better, so we have an increased flow rate, right? Uh, nope. <laughs> well, not on all filaments at least. So these are a few of the samples of the flow testing that I did. Big shout out to CNC Kitchen for providing us with an easy to use flow testing calibration thingy. There is a web portal that you can use where you can put in your parameters and then you can have a lot of different little poops that you can measure with the precision scale. Like I said, the results were a bit mixed in my opinion. So this can mean two things. We have reached the extrude limit of the extruder on the Creality K1 or the nozzle is just not that good. Now what the deciding factor is going to be I would have to test it on a better printer but right now I only have the Creality K1 and the even worse Sidewinder X1. So all the testing was done with eSun filament only the Hyper PLA I used the Creality uh, PLA for it so we have two brands we have eSun and we have the Creality Hyper PLA. We are going to start with the eSun PLA plus and right here the results were let's say interesting. <laughs> If we look at the regular nozzle, we can see that at 30 millimeters squared, we can reach a minus 5% of under extrusion. And this was at a temperature of 250 degrees. If we compare it with the CHT nozzle from Bontech, we see, yeah, a drop on the wrong side. <laughs> so we can see at the 30 millimeters squared section that we gone from five to 10% under extrusion. The PLA plus combined with the CHT, gave us a worse result so we could see that there was 5% more of under extrusion. Yeah, not a real good start at the beginning, right? And with the ABS Plus we can see a different result. First we're going to look at the regular nozzle and we can see that at the highest temperature that I used, which is 280 degrees, we can see that at 30 millimeters squared we have a minus 5% of under extrusion. Now if we look at the results of the CHT one, we can see that for the same minus 5% of under extrusion we could reach all the way up to 32 millimeters squared so we can see definitely a better result with the abs plus not only that if we look at the lower temperatures we can see at 260 degrees if we look at the 30 millimeters squared we are way under the negative 10 of extrusion so we see a lot of under extrusion and if we look at the same chart at the 30 millimeters squared on the cht minus 7 or minus 8 we can see a big improvement from the CHT nozzle and uh, yeah the ABS is just running great on this CHT nozzle. The next thing that we are going to look at is the Hyper PLA from Creality. Now with the Hyper PLA we could see a huge bump up in extrusion which is honestly not surprising. The Hyper PLA should be a better melting PLA than other PLAs but if we look at the charts with the regular nozzle we have a usable flow of 24 millimeters squared which was about I think a negative 3% and if we bump it up to 26 we have about seven percent of under extrusion now if we look at the CHT nozzle we can see that at the 24 mark we are still well on our way on a perfect extrusion at the 26 we are still doing good then we have 28 we have 30 and then we see a drop past minus five percent of under extrusion once we hit 32 millimeters squared so hyper PLA definitely a big bonus on this bomb tech CHT 
screen. Then when we reach the PETG results, we can see that we actually have the opposite of a good result. The PETG results on the CHT nozzle were way worse than the regular nozzle. Why that is, I can't really answer. I am not an engineer to know why the PETG doesn't like the CHT design of this nozzle, but we can see with the right materials like the Hyper PLA and the ABS Plus that we see an increase of flow at the same temperatures. Now let's talk about carbon filled parts. And I have two right here in front of me. This has been printed at 200 millimeters a second on the Creal TK1, and we had a flow of about 80 millimeters square and we have just an amazing result so we have a pass through right over here everything looks perfect we have no weird stuff going on this was just an amazing print we can see some vfa artifacting but this is not the filament or the nozzle this is just the printer if we look at the stand this is also an amazing print the details are very nice we have a nice a flat texture of it it feels really nice and the quality is great so the nozzle definitely worked very well with this carbon filled PETG and if you want to download this design this will be available at, in the review of the Saturn 3 Ultra. Also a nice little thing is that now these days on the Creel TK1 you can buy a lot of different flex plates. There is actually a video from uh, I think it's from Thomas Sandladerer I think it is. <laughs> I will link it and you can see all the different flex plates and even the carbon filled one has this nice effect in it right over here. But everything Thing. very good the overhangs even the bottom sides of this filament yeah it's all looking very great this is just a really cool print with this nozzle then let's talk about the price the price is about 53 euros here in belgium shipped to my door quite expensive regular nozzles go for about a few euros the piece well this is quite expensive now we have a harder tip nozzle we have a copper designed CHT with a nickel coating so we have a high quality nozzle but should you buy it well on the Creality K1 it's a real pain in the ass to change the nozzle and the less I have to do it the more that I love it so that's why I bought this nozzle so this is really an all-in-one nozzle for me I just put it in the printer I have a CHT to increase flow on materials then can accept it not like the PLA plus and the PTG from Eason but I mainly print with ABS plus so for me this nozzle is absolutely excellent and I like to do some printing and some carbon filled materials and in the future I will have to do a lot of reviews with some exotic materials so for me this is a no-brainer this is a real good nozzle for me so for me it's going to be a bit difficult to say yeah you should get this nozzle this is the best nozzle in the world well like you can see it's not the PLA and the PTG didn't perform all that great but this could also be a printer related issue that the extruder didn't have enough grip future testing will tell with that, I would say look up other reviews, not only mine, but look at other content creators and look what they have to say about it. All right, that's gonna be it. Leave a comment down below what you think about my review of the Bontex CHT. If you liked it, give me a big thumbs up and guys, I see you in the next one. But wait, before you go, I have a lot of different videos. Maybe check them out right over there.